Prajanjali, as we mentioned according to the agenda, I they will start with the case presentation and then we will finish the past, the first part of uh, uh, treatment regimen simplification and then followed by I will give a talk on the resistant associated substitution. Is it clinically important? We will follow the first case first, so you can see. As Ajahn mentions, uh, it may be long time. The first one is hepatitis C genotype 1B, and treatment might be non solotic patient and actually still quite young. How can we treat this patient? As we know that today when I talk about simplification, that means we, we will not longer use interferon-based therapy, and we try to treat the, treat the simple regimen with rest side effect, rest drug duct interaction, and also very short course. For the first case, if the patient have genotype 1B, treatment naive, non solotic What is the best for this patient? You can see this is a study of uh, sofort bubia and the dyspasphere. One pill daily, and this only eight week treatment duration. Uh, it, it formed the first clinical trial to see that the subgroup of patients who have a treatment naive genotype 1B and SCV well low at the baseline, less than 6 million IU per mil, still able to achieve SVR over 95%. Therefore, the one I show you is a, this the first one is from ICON study. Okay, and the four one is confirmed by real world practice. So the real world also confirmed my own study that if you see patient like this patient, genotype 1B, well low load, less than 6 million IU per mil, and have no cellulosis and never been treated, you can give them one pill a day because so far we are and this part we fit those combination in one pill. So once a day for eight weeks, you achieve over 95% SVR across the study, even from clinical trial or real world experience. Do we have another agent? So what would what you mean that I was going to mention today, I will touch on only the currently available uh, drug in Thailand. And tomorrow morning you can see, I will talk on new drug and how we use them. So all the new drug I will keep for tomorrow plenary sessions. So uh, Sepatia or Elbas, we have uh, Plastikasovia, also fit dose combination, one daily, again in genotype 1B, patient without cellulosis. Again, you can see that among those who have uh, minimal fibrosis, F0 to F2, you can see that 97% achieved every hour, just eight week treatment duration with septatia. So how about the new agent that I'm going to talk more tomorrow, this Kekepivir uh, and Pibentasvir, also fit those combination but require three tablets daily. Okay, this also give you that eight week treatment regimen in genotype one, you achieve 99 percent, just been in treatment duration and not different from 12 weeks at all. And so that for the first case, that genotype one, B treatment naive non cellulosic and you can treat them one pill a day for eight weeks and achieve at least 95 percent SVR. So just just request Ajahn about. So the patient, uh, she was quite young. So can we start Pepsi treatment now, or he, she can wait? Okay, that uh, that's a good question. I think now, if you look all international guidelines, we know that any SCV infected patient should be treated, regardless of uh, symptom and significant of liver disease. Except in some country like in Thailand, when we still have a budget constraint, we had to prioritize patient. The reason that now we want to treat even early patients, they had a few reasons. Number one, we know that although patient with uh, minimal fibrosis has a less incident to progress to liver cancer and cellulosis, you can see about 3% within five years. Compared with those who start with the uh, reaching fibrosis or cellulosis, they can develop liver cancer up to 30 to 40% within five years follow up. So put together in the term of prevent liver disease, it not need to be urgent, you can wait. But what we gain from treatment, number one, we now, we know that when you treat hepatitis C, you also able to reduce the another 
non-liver related morbidity and mortality. There are many studies, particularly in USA and Europe, when they have the last cohort follow up the patient many years, they found that a hepatitis C treated patient who achieved SVR has a lower liver related mortality and also overall uh, mortality and also uh, non liver related mortality. So, number one, you, you, you reduce mortality in the future. Secondly, you can reduce the risk of some disease. Now we know that when you treat hepatitis C, uh, they, they compare with the hepatitis patient who achieved treatment and comparing those who were not treated and comparing between those who achieved SVR and those who not achieved SVR. SVR is sustained by the correspondent mean here. They found that hepatitis C who received treatment and achieved a certain logical response, they have the lower incidence of diabetes type 2 in the future, about 10 years follow-up. Secondly, let the lower incidence of chronic kidney disease and end-state renal disease. Thirdly, let the lower incidence of coronary artery vascular disease. So put all together, treating hepatitis C, achieving heal, you also reduce non-liver related mortality. Number two, in the term of morbidity and mortality, you also reduce the transmission. They found that if you try to select some patient to treat, the risk of new case still going on. It's slightly declined, but not much. But if you extend to treat all patients, you will significantly decline the risk of transmission. And that means you can reduce the hepatitis C in the uh, population. And because our disease is quite different from HIV, we, are, we kill. So when kill is kill from the disease, so that that another issue. Oh, that that the reason that why we treat all. If we have enough budget, but only in country like Thailand, we stratification. We try to use the one that urgently need, which I think is not right. And may back to the first case, I forgot that I just mentioned that uh, she has S allergen negative, yes. but NTSB call positive. Yes. Now we know now that. SAV and SBV and SCV can have uh, interaction between these two viruses. Normally, when you have co-infections, 70% of the patient, hepatitis B, will be suppressed by hepatitis C. And another 20%, hepatitis B, will dominate over hepatitis C. And about 10% have both active. In this patient, and we learn from DA, when you suppress hepatitis C, you can cause hepatitis B reactivation. How common? If the patient has surface antigen positive, after uh, cure from hepatitis C, about 10 to 40 percent, we have hepatitis B reactivation. So therefore now, in many guidelines, it depends on that two ways. If you have S antigen positive and DNA still below the indication for hepatitis B treatment, we treat hepatitis C and monitor hepatitis DNA. If B DNA increase at least one lot, or form undetectable to be over 1,000 IU per mu, we start anti-HB therapy. The second strategy is give prophylaxis. That from European country, they will aggressive. If they had S energy, negative, and no indication for hepatitis B treatment, they will give the prophylaxis antiviral B before you start hepatitis C therapy and until 12 weeks after the end of hepatitis C therapy, which I think is too aggressive. And for this patient, she negative as antigen, but anti cause too positive. We know that the risk of reactivation does occur, but really minimum. It less than 5%. So what I'm going to do in this case is I just monitor hepatitis B DNA. One is break two, then I will add a nuclear side or nuclear side analog. Okay. Thank you. So I think for our HIV co-infected pa patient, it should not be a problem for Hep B reactivation because all patients get chinophobia, lamivudine, or chinophobia, FTC. So maybe this uh, issue is quite uh, less. So for the next uh, case, it's quite complicated case from Dr. Philip, <laughs> so he consulted me. So uh, the, uh, the patient, uh, 58 years old, Caucasian male, living in Thailand, and have a, a high BMI normal blood, blood pressure and deny alcohol or smoke and uh, hepatitis C was known for 10 to 12 years and he was treated with uh, Pegriba in US in 2007 
but he, he get it just only for four months only, and he cannot tolerate to pick rayba, and he, he decided to stop it. And um, so just uh, last uh, uh, two months ago, uh, FibroScan show cap about 220, and fibrosis is about 12.4, and uh, has abnormal e EKG. So the QTC 423, and with incomplete right ventral branch block, and uh, creatinine is still okay for his age, and high ALT AST, and uh, also S antigen positive, and the S and the core all negative, all were negative. HIV were negative as well, and um, hepatitis C genotype 1A with detectable hepatitis C viral load. And uh, he has a chance to check for his cardiovascular, has a normal uh, uh, LV function, but he has a total calcium score 121. So this means that he has a moderate uh, vascular uh, risk. So calcium score uh, this, uh, is, a, is a good, is a the best marker uh, to, uh, for a was uh, for uh, what uh, cardiovascular disease now. So it's more than 100, it's, it means the patient have a moderate uh, risk. So for this case, finally, mono infection, previous PEG RIVA treatment, and with comorbidity. So what would... How can I get my slide presentation? Oh, Now we move to the second case. So this one, uh, genotype 1A, uh, human explain, actually from FibroScan, 12.4 uh, kilopascal, it can be advanced fibrosis, almost cellulosis here. Because we know for sure that for cellulosis is ab above 13, but 12.4, whatever, it means at least bridging fibrosis or early cellulosis. So I put in genotype 1A, PEG, Ribavirin treatment experience and cellulitis with comorbid disease. So here is the regimen that you can look at for patient with compensated cellulosis. And you look at genotype 1A. Treatment experience, you can start from uh, ladies past via, so forth via again. Uh, you can give them, uh, this depends on, in some country, they still allow to give them ladies past via, so forth via, one tablet a day. But you can see that among those who have biologic failure, even small number of patients, they always have cellulosis. So therefore, in some countries like Thailand, because we allow the reimbursement uh, treatment only once for lifetime, so we have to get the maximum. So I would recommend to add on ribavirin. So you can have 12 weeks, so what will be it? Let this pass via plus ribavirin for 12 weeks, or if the patient have some contraindication to laboratory, let's, let's have severe hemolysis, you can give them dual therapy for 24 weeks. Okay, and then we have another agent which might be licensed in Thailand soon, either so far via Ruppertasvia. This also simple because it's a trick dose combination. Once a day without laboratory, achieve as we are over 94%. That another simple regimen. We also have the soft bacteria. Again, we can give them so 12 weeks with ribavirin or give them 24 weeks without ribavirin. The last one we quite complicated, which I will mention later in my presentation. You can see these uh, elbasvir and gasopivir trick dose combination. The problem is when you see the patient particularly genotype 1A, 1A had a higher incidence of baseline rash mutation, which will going to be my lecture later on. What I can see, show you that, you can see Elbas via Sepatia once daily for 12 weeks, even genotype 1A, but no rash, you can see that 99% achieve as we are, comparing only 58% in those who have rash at the baseline in F5A, resistant at so state valiant and 
later on in my talk, I will call resistant associate substitutions. Okay, so you can see that RAS in genotype 1A has significant effect on lower SVR with Elbasvir and Gasopivir therapy, but this can be uh, manageable. You can see the large column. You still have one A with rash at the baseline, but you just add ribavirin to septatia and extend treatment duration from 12 weeks to 16 weeks. We see again 100% SVR. So therefore, that right in the table, I will put like septatia. You have you have to check rash at the baseline. If the patient have rash, give them the gasopivir, elbasvir, in combination with ribavirin for 16 weeks, which will be more complicated, so you better to choose another regimen. The last thing is, in some countries, like in Thailand, red is still not commercially available. What shall we do? We know that the incidence of baseline red among genotype 1A is correlated with the high volume load, higher volume load, higher incidence of baseline red. So therefore, in European countries, they recommend for those who not uh, able to do rest testing, they recommend that if you have genotype 1A and volume load at base like greater than 800,000 a uh, per mil like this patient, you should give them uh, gasopia elbasvir plus libavulin for 16 weeks. So come to this patient that they can answer to a chant that will be uh, simple regimen had to be soft well, that only one tablet throughout week. And soft ladies past year had to be with libavulin for two weeks because it has cellulosis and treatment excellent. Okay, and the last one is uh, elbasvir sepatia seem to be more complicated, require uh, adding on ribavirin and extend treatment duration to 16 weeks. And these are the recommendation that available. The one that they put in clay because it not clearly available in Thailand yet. Like if you had kikapivir and parent you can give them for only 12 weeks without rebarbering. But because it's not, not available in Thailand, I try not to touch and spare the apple for tomorrow morning. Thank you. So just come back to the, the test. You go to the, the next. Oh, and the second issue while John uh, putting on the next case, you had to, because he had comorbidity, you had to check drug, drug interaction. Yeah. You had, I can't tell you all because it's so many. The best way is go to the hepato drug, drug interaction of the pool. You just put the drug, the name of drug, and then show you uh, whether they have drug, drug interaction. But some something you have to remember, lies uh, PPI, omeprazole. If you give the patient the simplest one, I said soft well for two weeks without labor. But if the patient requires PPI, you have to switch because PPI is a drug, drug interaction to soft well. We allow to take only, it has to be lower dose than equivalent to omeprazole 20 milligrams a day. And you have to split the dose between DAA and omeprazole at least four hours apart and take drug with me, so it's more complicated. So for myself, if PPI is not so essential, I stop PPI for 12 weeks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So you go for the, the next test. Um, uh, 38 year old MSM, HIV positive, history of drug user, and he is curri currently on Tinophobia FTC effervence with the viral suppress, high CD4 cell count, and high hepatitis C RNA genotype 3. Uh, he was treated with the uh, PEC RIVA in 2014 and SVR active, but just recently he has an uh, abnormal ALT and we check hepatitis C again. It's uh, detectable of hepatitis C RNA and elevated high, uh, so elevated liver enzyme uh, more than five times. And but no clinical uh, symptom. DDL is also positive, and endosound has a fatty liver. So, just uh, the question. So because he has 
here's a MSM population is a high risk of reinfection. So you, we have to think about uh, in this population, if the patient have abnormal liver function test again, even though uh, they were treated. So we have to check hepatitis C RNA, whether uh, 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 they have a reinfection or not. And also drug to drug interaction. So we, we know more from our, uh, uh, Professor David Berger uh, for the next uh, section. And hepatitis C therapy option for these tests. So what would you recommend? And also uh, whether we need to do resistant testing and in terms of significant of hepatitis C with the liver fibrosis. So before uh, giving into detail, I just answer the simplest one first. Do we need to do the RAS testing? Uh, next, 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 next session, you will, you will hear from me about drug resistance and RAS testing. But give you the answer this first, because it's a genotype 3, treatment excellent, we recommend to do in genotype 3. Particularly look at the Y93SON. Be the because it's significant impact to the treatment regimen. So therefore, in this case, if it you in the country that you can do, you should do. In the country that you not do, it no problem in next few years because the new DAA somehow will not require resistant testing. So before we go to this patient have uh, genotype three without cirrhosis, okay, and uh, have SAV co-infection. I will start with the more typical one first. During the DAA therapy era, we know that genotype 3 become more difficult to treat genotype with DAA, comparing with another genotype. So we'll touch on genotype 3 first, and then we'll come back later on to talk with co-infection. Uh, let's say for you that if the patient have genotype 3 without cirrhosis, that's quite simple. You can treat them either uh, soft bell or soft the cartilage. But when the patient have cirrhosis, Solve the cartilage light from this study is no longer good. You can see that only 89% SVR with solve the cartilage either for 12 weeks or 16 weeks. Uh, you might say 89% is quite good enough, but in the DAA era, any respond with below than 90. They did survey among hepatologists, some hepatologists said that anything SVR below 95 is suboptimal. So for me, go to the not not too far extreme. So anything below 90 is uh, suboptimal with uh, DAA based therapy. So in this patient, solve the cartilage even with rabarin and extend treatment duration to 16 weeks still not op optimal. Therefore, you look at the ASOD guideline, ISO guideline, as well as Thailand guideline. If the patient G3 cirrhosis, we recommend to treat them with uh, solve the cartilage and liberin for 24 weeks without study, no clinical trial. But we know that 18 weeks is 16 weeks still not enough. So therefore, this one should not be the treatment of choice for this patient. Okay. So I go to another one. Another one is soft well. Okay. You can see that soft well among G3 cirrhosis treatment naive soft well for 12 weeks or 24 weeks, quite good enough. But it's not good for treatment experience. You can see that the, the SVR below 90 again. However, uh, we did the study, another agent called Casopiva and Elbasvir. You know that this agent normally not really effective against genotype 3. Therefore, you have to ask support buvir. So, so this will be triple therapy. Uh, two, put in the thick dust combination, Gasopia Elbasvia, and as sulfur Puvia. You can see that uh, Sepatia plus Sob in G3 treatment naive, even cellulosis. As we are of egg weak treatment is up to 93%. But recommendation still makes regimen simple, put on 12 weeks. And look at this one, okay? Even the patient with or without cellulosis, the regimen quite good up to almost 100%. If we are with commission it down to 83 percent but bear in mind that the number of the patient is really small only 12 patients so they look again 
this by large clinical trial called CR study. Look at the soft Elbasvir gasofibra in T3 solution. You can see that throughout week with or without oral, you achieve almost 100% SVR. So this will be another regimen. So the first one can be solve the card level in 24 week, or when you want to save money at shorter treatment duration in order to improve patient compliance, you can give them soft Elbasvir and gasofibra for throughout week. So another one, did also solve well. Because in the clinical trials, as remember, I say that it's only 12 patients. So the SVR are not good. So now did the real world study. They look at the real world in German. Look at the soft well potassium with or without ribavirin in G3. You can see that even in solotic patient, you can see the SVR is good enough. It's up to 94%. Even without rabobulin. So I would say for this patient, if we don't talk about SAV, either sob well for 12 week or sob gasofibia, elbasvir for 12 week should be adequate. And actually the patient, he hasn't had the cellulosis yet, he just fat deliver, so that more simple. It no cellulosis. You can give them only 12 week sob and the cathobia without rabobulin. So can be three regimen. So I will go to what I can add on this case that about SAV co-infection that will be actually on my last case. So maybe I, I will let you finish your talk without the case okay. because we have limited time. Okay, so, so then I will go yeah. from the upper and then we go. So we come to this case already, okay? This cellulosis. So this uh, simple regimen for treatment naive or pec experience for T3, if the patient have no cellulosis, treatment naive, you can see you can either give the patient which solve the cut via 12 week, solve well 12 week, solve Elbas via Casavir 12 week. That quite simple one. And if you have new drug, Kekepiu and Parentasvir, just without ribavirin in eight week. Okay, if the patient treatment naive but unfortunately cellulitic, you still able to treat the patient with soft well for twelve week. Uh, soft the cardio ribavirin has to be twenty four week, or soft elbasvir gasofibra only twelve week. If the patient previously fell from pet inhibitor ribavirin therapy, you can see that without cellulitic, simple still. Treatment still quite simple, same as the non solotic patient. 12 weeks, either soft well or soft the car, or soft gasofibra elbasvir. But if the patient solotic, you have to give the patient soft well 12 weeks, or soft the cathobia libavir in 24 weeks, or soft gasofibra elbasvir 12 weeks. So this you can choose anyone, quite simple, without rebovirin. Okay? Now we come to genotype 6. Genotype 6 become the major problem in our region because it's high prevalent in the Indochina, which you don't see much in European or Caucasian country. And the other issue is that why many clinical trials, when you look at registration trials, they will have a very small number of genotypic patients. Lastly, you know that genotypic have many sub-genotypes. I see one IQ whatever, so it seems to be quite heterogeneity genotype. Okay? What shall we do in this the patient with cellulosis? You see, it's a very small number. Did look at the 25 patients uh, who have <coughs> cellulosis in 8% and 92% treatment naive, and almost of them, 88% were Asian. You can see that with the uh, ladies' part, we are so for only 12 weeks in genotype 6, you achieve SVR up to 96%. That's quite good enough. So, this light soap. Uh, ladies' part with, or you call Harwani, just once a day for 12 weeks. Another one is soft with It seems to be not really good for genotype 6, so this is my own study. We just published last year in ESO meeting. We look in many countries where we have a lot of genotype 6 in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam. 80% of the patients were treatment experience, 
and about 16% were cirrhosis. You can see that soft bevacizumab only throughout week with our labovirin, genotype 3, we achieved about 92%. And even though those who have advanced fibrosis, either F3 or F4, which means cirrhosis, you can see SVR also 92 to 100%, just one daily tablet of soft well for 12 weeks in Asian population. And therefore, the regimen for genotype 6 treatment explained, no cellulosis and with cellulosis. You can see without cellulosis, you can keep to a week either a soap the dyspasphere, soap the bataxia, or soap the cataxia. But with cellulosis, you better to keep uh, to a week. And for me, in the case that you're so concerned about relapse, you can add ribavirin. And so this same, without cellulosis, 12 weeks without ribavirin. In cellulosis, you can keep them to a week with or without ribavirin. So we come to genotype 1 cellulosis with chronic kidney disease, stage 4 or 5, with GFR below 30. This is an important issue because you know that so far we are clearly still not recommend in patient with GFR below 30. So you have to find another agent which able to be used in chronic kidney disease. So the first one is gasovivir and elbasvir in genotype 1 patient who have chronic kidney disease state 4 or 5 with GFR below 30, cause C suffer study. You can see that SVR by 12 weeks without rubberine. SVR is 97% and 93%, even though those who are on or not on hemolysis. And look at the chronic kidney state, either state 4, state 5, also achieve really high SVR up to 100% and 93% for state 4 and 5 respectively. And when you look at uh, cellulosis or non cellulosis you can see that still high SVR, 94 to 100%. So now genotype 1 with chronic kidney disease, state 4 or 5, either on or not on hemolysis, just keep them uh, elbasvir, gasovivir, once daily for two weeks. It's good that the patient just need to get the libavirin. As you know, that libavirin cannot be uh, removed by hemodialysis, so it can cause severe hemolysis. So this one simple. Uh, and this you can see the side effect. It's not much different than the patient with normal renal function and not, not much significant higher than uh, placebo control population. And most of side effects uh, are mild and tangent. And we go to recommendation for uh, genotype 1, chronic kidney disease. You can keep them elbasvir, gasovivir, 12 weeks, even they have or doesn't have uh, cellulosis. We come to the last for this patient, a severe severe co-infection, genotype cellulosis. As Ajahn actually mentioned at the beginning that when you have SCV, SCV co-infections, the problem is you accelerate disease progression, both SAV related and hepatitis C related. As you can see, C can go to liver cellulosis up to 20% within five years and also increase the risk of liver cancer. And that's why uh, hepatocellular carcinoma in co-infection patient, SCV, SAV, younger than those who are mono-infected SCV. And certainly, it always become aggressive, inflammatory type. So it caused to uh, poor prognosis. So now we look at the soft the cataract in G3 patient with SAV co-infection. You can see randomized session comparing between uh, eight week and twelve week, and also uh, you can see in treatment naive and treatment excellent. Just mind you, we got drug drug intervention. Effavilin is the one that hepatologists don't like <laughs> because they always have drug duck intervention with our GA. With the uh, soap and the cartovia, you can see that if you give the patient effervalent, you have to increase the dose up to 19 milligram daily. The good news is BMS agreed to sell 19 milligram at the same time as 16 milligram. But if the patient uh, receive uh, retinovir boosted PI, we have to reduce the dose to 30 milligram, but personal, this my personal, even that from clinical trial, I, I normally don't reduce the dose. Because if you look at clinical trial, all three patients who have relapse or allergic failure, they receive 30 milligram dose. So for me, maybe 30 is too low, even in this combination therapy. And you can see SVR. What we learn is 
12 week is good enough. 12 week is up to 98% HVR among SCV, SAV co-infected uh, genotype 3 cellulitic patients. And even uh, look at the baseline, what the color of your skin, how high, well or low, either cellulitic or not cellulitic, and either whatever uh, antiretroviral regimen, the SVI approach over 90%. And look at the genotype. You can see some genotype, really small number, but across pan genotypic with high SVR. Actually, among hepatologists, I think you can you, you see by yourself as well, when you look SVR with DA therapy, comparing between SCV mono-infected and SCV, SAV co-infected, it seems to be that SVR is always higher in co-infected patients. It's not head-to-head -head comparison, but you can see that with co-infection, SVR for hep, hep C also approach 100%. When mono-infection, you around 95%. It's not head-to-head, -head, but everyone actually like that. We said that maybe due to uh, virus to virus interaction, make it more able to kill by DAA or either DAA in a contact A, DAA interaction itself. And you can see whatever regimen you also achieve almost 100% kill. And look in the term of SAV by using this soap and the card, it not interfere with your C default card at all. It's stable. Okay? Therefore, conclude with the co infection, I give you the principle. I will say that indication for hepatitis C treatment in SAV, SCV co infected person are prioritized because they have more rapid liver disease progression. They also affect to SIV and also uh, cause the SCC accuracy form in young age. So they are prioritized. The last one is they also have a higher risk of disease transmission. Maybe you know that among SCV co-infection, they will have high SCV, and the risk of SCV transmission is about 2.4, comparing with only uh, mono-infection. Okay. So the same SCV regimen in SCV mono-infection can be used in SCV, SAV co-infection, regardless of CD4 count. Okay. Except the main consideration is the drug drug interaction and overlapping toxicity between antiretroviral and DAA therapy. I give you some example. Soft well, uh, Casuprior Elbasvir cannot be given with uh, effervalent. Uh, antiretroviral regimen should be stabilized and adjust to avoid drug duct. We should allow until you stabilize your regimen because if we give the drug today and then you still able, you still change your antiretroviral regimen, some new agent might interfere with our DAA. So we better to allow infection doctor to stabilize their antiretroviral regimen first. And if we require uh, to switch some antiretroviral regimen, like if you want to give the patient support wheel and verbatim wheel, but patient taking effervalent, we have to allow infectious doctor to switch therapy, but should not stop with some clinical trial. When you stop, you increase the mortality, particularly from uh, SAV related condition. And in the good way, this uh, recommendation, if you see SCV, SAV co-infected patient, you look at the CD4 count per. If the patient still have high CD4 count above 500 and had no clinical symptom of SAV related, you better to treat hep C first. To doing this, you can avoid drug duct interaction. And hepatitis C require only 12 week treatment management among this high CD4 count asymptomatic, it should be okay. And then you achieve SVR approach 100%, so you can get rid of the problem of C co-infection, and then you can start antiletroviral agent. But among those who have low CD4 count or symptomatic SAV infected patient or have some OI already, you have to start antiletroviral regimen until you stabilize regimen, and then we can uh, treat hepatitis C in order to avoid duct, duct interaction. And main, main consideration is check on the Google about uh, drug-duck interaction. That's from my talk. Thank you.